What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Jelly Goon TV. Welcome back to my beautiful people on YouTube and welcome back to the Jelly Goon Squad of course. Thank you so much for turning in. I really do appreciate it a lot. Today we have another video, but before we get to that, I want to say please do watch the ads on these videos in order to support your favorite YouTuber with new content, new camera, new everything. We are currently trying to get a new computer so we could do live, live streams, reactions, and um, that could be really dope. But yeah, anyway guys and girls, today we have the second part of 2003 Iraq War Animated History. I love this guy so much. Thank you for making these videos. Please hit the link down below if you want to support him, of course. Go to his channel. Show him some love. He's amazing, man. So, yeah. Anyway, without further ado, I had a little rant in the first one, and I'm sorry about that, of course. But uh, this one, I think it's going to be better. I don't know, but uh, we're going to see. Anyway, let's get into it. Let's go. All right. The first major engagement began on March 23rd, when a maintenance convoy of the 3rd U.S. Infantry Division took a wrong turn into Nasiriya, right into the headquarters of the Iraqi 3rd Corps. Caught in a hastily prepared ambush, 15 of the 18 vehicles were destroyed by heavy weapons fire and 18 U.S. soldiers were killed or captured. But the strategic bridges over Nasiriya's modestly named Saddam Canal were secured later that day after men from the 2nd Marine Division stormed the city, suffering heavy casualties from the determined Iraqi defenders. As if the intense urban combat wasn't enough, six Marines were also killed in a friendly fire incident when an A-10 Warthog mistakenly attacked Man. their amphibious vehicle. Finally, on the evening of March 24th, the Marines broke through and established a perimeter north of the city, which held up despite multiple counterattacks Damn. by Iraqi forces and the Fedayeen Saddam militia, who were fanatical not only about Saddam, but apparently also about <laughs> what? Further north was the town of Najaf, which was situated close to highways leading to the important cities of Karbala and Baghdad. Due to its strategic location, Coalition forces decided not to bypass Najaf, and instead chose to isolate the town out of fears it could become a staging area for attacks against American supply lines. To accomplish this, the Coalition needed to capture the bridges to the north and south what? of the town. Really? Elements of the 1st Brigade combat team attacked the northern bridge, Jenkins. codenamed Jenkins, Leroy in the early hours Jenkins. of March 25th, but made slow progress until they linked up with reinforcements before dawn. The Americans eventually fought their way across the bridge, despite desperate attempts by Iraqi engineers to destroy it. Around the same time, U.S. forces advanced on the southern bridge codenamed Objective Floyd. Resistance by both regular military and militia forces was intense at both sites. On one occasion, an Iraqi drove a city bus at full speed into an M3 Bradley Nothing CFE. Happened, right? On March 26th, Najaf was successfully encircled, and, and the attackers is were relieved and is by the 101st Good job, guys. <laughs> Over the next several days, the Americans swept through the town with tanks and infantry. The 101st deliberately left a single road out of the city open in the hope of using it as a kill zone for escaping troops. On April 1st, some weary Iraqi soldiers took the bait and were ambushed by snipers and helicopter gunships, and the city ultimately fell on April 4th. To the south, British forces had an unexpectedly difficult time taking Basra and its nearby port. Starting on March 27th, they whittled down the Iraqi garrison defending the valuable port over the course of two weeks. When they finally gained control of the vital waterway, only 11 Britons had died while the Iraqis had lost some 40 to 50 times that wow. number. When British armor finally rolled let into me, the city... Let me just pause here. I just want to say one thing that uh, America and English and everybody who's fighting in the Iraq war, you're actually very good to keep your casualty down. You know what I mean? They're actually very professional soldiers. They're doing whatever they can to prevent, you know, side bombs and everything because these, yeah, these people are fighting like cowards. But, you know, they are relatively good to keep the countdown of their own soldiers who died, right? That's kind of crazy, but yeah. 
I just still don't agree with this wall. But anyway, let's go. They were welcomed by jubilant locals, yes, as predicted by U.S. Make, Secretary uh, of Defense of Donald Rumsfeld. A lot of people. Unfortunately, however, the crowds quickly turned into mobs of looters. A lot of people makes war, it makes money of the this The final war. major engagement before coalition forces arrived in Baghdad was at the Battle of Karbala Gap, a roughly 25-mile or 40-kilometer long strip of land flanked by the Euphrates and Rizaza rivers. Iraqi commanders were well aware of the Gap's strategic importance and had placed two divisions of the elite Republican Guard to block the Americans' advance. However, Saddam Hussein's son, Qusay, severely weakened the defense by redirecting some of them to the north, which proved to be a fatal mistake. On April 1st, American troops broke through the Gap, reaching the Euphrates at the city of Musayib. Though several Iraqi armored divisions counterattacked on the night of April 3rd, they were driven back by wow. aircraft and rocket fire, and the coalition held on to the important bridgehead. With the path to Baghdad forced open and victory on the horizon, a last bloody struggle for the capital began. While the Iraqi Yo, army had tanks, almost man. completely disintegrated it. at this point, the Ba'athist party militias holding the city did not hesitate to utilize underhanded tactics to slow the coalition advance. After extended skirmishes with the defenders, Colonel David Perkins launched a surprise thunder run of nearly 30 tanks straight into the city on April 5th. Once behind enemy lines, the column came under intense fire from militiamen disguised as civilians, but Perkins was able to identify their defensive positions and execute a fighting withdrawal. U.S. Marines then stormed the Diyala Bridge on the eastern side of the city and advanced along the northern bank of the Euphrates. Aware that this flank was almost yeah. entirely undefended, the nervous troops fired on any car refusing to halt out of fear of suicide bombers. Amidst this carnage, Perkins led another thunder run into the heart of the capital on the 7th and rewarded himself by spending the night in one of Saddam's opulent palaces. After a final desperate defense by the militias, the city was finally captured on April 9th. There were some initial celebrations of by course. Iraqi civilians, because including widespread vandalism of statues and portraits depicting but the now-defeated Saddam. However, as in Basra, massive of waves course, of looting soon followed and continued until pulled. U.S. forces cracked down the on the defenders. But Saddam himself proved elusive and would not be captured for many months. Coalition soldiers would spend their time securing the occupation and searching for other high-value government officials that had escaped the invasion. But as the coalition searched for these officials, violence between Iraq's minority groups soon erupted and insurgents began to assemble. Americans. Oh, fuck these people! They died! <laughs> on May 1st, <laughs> 2003, idiots. Off the coast of San Diego, President Bush made a dramatic appearance, Fuck George Washington landing Bush. on the aircraft Fuck carrier USS ass. Abraham Lincoln. Lying the ass, former Air National Guard aviator wore a flight suit for his televised address in front of a national audience. Standing in front of an enormous banner reading, Mission Accomplished, he announced the end of major combat yeah. operations in no. Iraq. At the time, the proclamation seemed reasonable. The Iraqi military was in shambles, and Saddam Hussein had been reduced from an autocrat to a fugitive. But despite all appearances, the troubles were just beginning. For the next eight years, the coalition was engaged in a protracted counterinsurgency and suffered heavy casualties, while many thousands of civilians lost their lives. In 2003, the mission may have been accomplished, yeah, and the brief the conventional phase of fighting was indeed finished. But much like in Afghanistan, the war in Iraq had only just begun. Oh, see, man, that's a crazy video. I really do love it. Thank God I did not go crazy like the last video. I'm sorry about that, guys and girls. I just don't agree with this war. I think it's a way of getting money. I think it's a way of greed. I think it's a way of capitalism. There are so many people who made money of this uh, war. So many people, the oil firms, the companies, the weapon industry, the IRA, whatever, man. They made a lot of weapons, man. Even the fucking IRA are selling to the fucking Mexican cartel. Uh, rumors. But uh, yeah, it's a corrupt world that we live in and, um, you know, the CIA is even working with the cartels. The CIA is probably working with ISIS. There's a lot of things that is in this because it's a chess game. And chess is not that simple when your enemy and opponent is playing.
You know what I mean? You're not playing against the computer, which you can control. You're playing against the human being. And that's why there's so many dirty deals. That's why the Americans are so fucking corrupt up to the fucking throat. Um, there's so many much money in political things. Like, for example, American po politics, right? They could get by. Basically, nobody cares. They get by by companies and, you know, the weapon industry and everything like that. Nobody really cares about cars. No, because there's America. Like, can you trust a politician that is bought by a fucking company, you fucking idiot? Like, people are so fucking retarded sometimes. Like, really. Politics is a dirty game. That's why. And politics is definitely a dirty game in this Iraq war. But people, they so fucking dumb. They think it's a conspiracy theory, or they think you crazy, or they think that everything is just messed up, like our country is so great. Your country sucks, okay? Your country really sucks, but it's still a beautiful country. It's like with a lot of beautiful people and with a lot of fucking great minds. Like you have a smart, a lot of smart people, really do. You are not even leading the scientist thing, so no you haven't, but uh, yeah, anyway. I just love you guys. Don't. This is not an anti-American thing. I love Americans. Trust me. I really do love them. I enjoy them a lot. I really love talking to them and everything like that. But they're so cute when you're trying to fight. Like, oh, we're the greatest country alive. You're not. Okay? You're not. USA is gone. You're not the greatest country alive anymore. Never happened. Anyway, I love America. Don't get me wrong. It's a beautiful country. And I wish every single American the best with the president election, of course. Really do. Um, anyway, guys and girls, if you like this video, please hit the like button down below. And if you really want to comment or you want to say something about this Iraq war or my opinion or whatever, you are welcome to comment down below. I would love to hear your opinion. And uh, if you really want to support this channel, we almost had 8,000 subscribers. And it's just crazy. It's almost 10,000. So I really would appreciate if you would subscribe and hit that notification button to get up updated on newest videos to come to this channel of course and you become a member of Jelly Goon Squad. Anyway guys and girls I'm gonna move on to the next one. I love you. Peace.